I am super excited to talk today about measuring metrics and KPIs to quickly move the revenue needle. Now, this is an important talk and uh, it's going to be, you know, as always entertaining, but educational. And uh, I am uh, I'm excited to be here now. I am home today in San Francisco and uh, my dog Louie is here with me. So if he if he jumps in and says hello, then, then that, that, that's say la vie, as they say. So uh, let me start. Let me start with a story. And uh, well, before I do that, so my name is Eli. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Saleshood, and uh, just again excited to be here. And so let me let me start with a story. And um, and so you know, last week I was speaking with an amazing enablement leader, and uh, you know she is uh, super experienced, been doing enablement for about ten years, and uh, you know. She comes from the marketing background and we're talking strategy and tactics. And, and I asked her, I said, so, uh, so how do you measure the impact? How do you measure the impact of all the great programs that you're running? And we were specifically talking about a virtual program around bootcamp onboarding. And, and her answer was, well, you know, kind of hesitated a little bit and, and said, well, time to first deal, time to second deal. And, and so kind of, I paused. And, and it became apparent to me that as enablement professionals, our skills and competencies, what we're great at, we're great at coaching, we're great at building content, we're great at facilitating training, we're great at doing the work, we're, we're super creative at rolling out programs, we're amazing program managers. But when it comes to moving the revenue needle and impacting revenue outcomes, you know, it, it we, we tend to be challenged a little bit. We don't have clarity of thought and we don't have clarity of vision around what data and what metrics we should be running. And, and that's why, you know, I decided to do this talk today on, you know, measuring the metrics and KPIs that ultimately will move revenue needles. And, you know, the answer to my friend when we were speaking the other day was, you know, have you thought about, you know, measuring some leading indicators around, uh, activities like like creating contacts, emailing contacts, right? If we want to help our teams be successful, we got to get early, early stage leading, leading indicators. And so that story, I hope, represents, you know, where I think a lot of people are. And some of you are amazing at metrics and KPIs. And please share your comments and insights. And it's great seeing everyone from around the world. So over the next 25 minutes, we're going to talk about the challenges with metrics and KPIs, specifically focusing on revenue enablement and enablement professionals. We're going to dive deep on leading versus lagging indicators. I think it's an important concept and I wanted to spend some time on it with you so folks can get comfortable with it and understand it and then lean into it and embrace it. And I'm going to give you a template, right? How do you manage up, right? How do you manage up with data? And then we're going to show you how you can get started so you can do this at scale. So let's jump in. So, you know, what's your current situation today? How are your teams doing? You know, feel free to add some comments in here. You know, how are your teams doing with ramp? How are your teams doing with win rates? How are your teams doing with quota attainment and the distribution of quota attainment across the organization? You know, we're seeing a lot of our, a lot, a lot of companies around the world, 50% of the revenue comes from 20%, right? So I'm going to ask you, right? What are you measuring and what does performance look like with your teams? Right. And, you know, we all just kind of fall back on ramp time and win rates and quota. And those are so important to measure. But these are lagging indicators. And so uh, I, I, I do want to make sure that each of you appreciates the importance of measuring these metrics and KPIs. But at the same time, you know, what we're seeing is while we talk a lot about quota ramp, attainment and all that good stuff, when you sit down and you dive into the details and you ask yourself, well, what are you really measuring? And you ask enabling professionals, you know, how they measure outcomes. The answers that we see a lot are, well, we're measuring completions of the training and the assessments and the quizzes and did everyone record their pitch? We're measuring consumption, right? Like, are they watching the videos? Are they downloading the files? Are they using the file? Kind of interesting. Uh, and, and we're measuring certifications and they stop, right? So, so the enablement industry needs to build standards and we need to elevate how and what we're measuring. And that's why this talk is here today. And, and so we're, I wanna introduce you to kind of three concepts, activity metrics, conversion metrics, and then outcome metrics. And you know, the conversion metric, the, the activity metrics are things like 
calls made, emails sent, meetings held, opportunities created. This is all data within Salesforce and within and within Microsoft and any CRM system that you're using. And uh, and so you just need to be on top of your productivity metrics and you got to know your KPIs. And then you want to look at conversion metrics, right? The the movement of activity, right? Leads to meetings, meetings to opportunities, stage one. To, this is all great data. And then you want to look at outcome metrics, right? But the more that you can understand and get access to information around activity metrics or conversion metrics, the bigger impact you're going to have on the business and the faster that you're going to actually move that revenue needle up and to the right. And so the question is, why are metrics and KPIs so hard to come by? Why are they so hard to understand? I've thought a lot about this, you know, over the last few years and I've come up with five reasons, right? Number one, I think, it's really hard to understand the process, right? And, and we need to, in order to really understand metrics and KPIs, we need to understand our processes, our lead processes, our sales processes, our buyer journeys, our customer success, our renewals, our quote to cash, right? How are we going to measure improvements in activities if we don't really understand our processes? So as leaders, as enablement professionals, we need to really understand our processes. And that means grabbing a whiteboard, check by check, drawing the boxes, understanding how the flow of data and the flow of workflow works. But it's hard. And, and a lot of the times when we step into these roles, they're not documented. And so uh, number one reason why metrics and KPIs are hard is, you know, we just struggle understanding and, and documenting the processes. Number two is data access, right? A lot of um, revenue leaders that I've spoken with over the years, you know, what, when I ask them and I say, you know, as an operational leader, what advice would you give enablement professionals? Their advice is universal. Get access to the data, ask for it. Make sure your login to Salesforce and Microsoft is working. Make sure that you can touch the data, feel the data, run the reports, set up your filters. You've got access to data. If you don't have access to the data, you don't know where to look for it. Go look for it, ask for it, don't be shy. And then I think another reason why metrics and KPRs are hard is it's hard work to get alignment with stakeholders. And that means something like this. Before you roll out a program, sit down with your frontline manager, sit down with marketing, sit down with your CRO and ask, what do we want to measure? What outcomes do we want to impact? You know, why are we rolling out this program? And then and then and then be quiet and, and get the feedback. Right. And then and then after a program or during it, when you start looking at some data, when you start getting some data, it's super fascinating. You know, a dear friend of mine, Carol Sostala said one of the things she does around intentional enablement leadership is, you know, she'll open up the data and then ask the leaders and the marketers to share what are they seeing? What insights are they seeing? That way you can really uncover the impact that the data is having. And, and, and you know, so thank you, Carol, for that. And then number four, you got to be disciplined about benchmarking, right? You're going to roll out a new program. What are you benchmarking? What are you going to improve? What are you going to impact? And uh, and then finally, you know what? The reason why metrics and KPIs are hard is it requires creativity. We need to be creative about where the data is, how to report on it, how to correlate it. And there's so much here. But hopefully, you know, if you're struggling with any one of these five, you know, there's a lot of work written. We've got a ton of blogs and just want to impress upon you to lean into these. And, and let's as an industry, let's accept that these are hard and let's try and solve these problems together. Now, I, I, I could spend an entire week running a workshop just on these five topics. And, you know, I've got, you know, a short time here to kind of impress upon you the importance of measuring and uh, uh, impacting metrics and KPIs to move the needle. And I wanted to really focus in on one of the key areas. The key area I want to focus on is the difference between lagging indicators versus leading indicators. Right. And I think. Hopefully everyone understands these terms and, you know, a lagging indicator, strangely enough, is revenue, quota attainment, bookings, right? Cross sell, upsell, like all those revenue metrics that we, that measure growth. But if we're going to, if we're going to wait 12 months to look at the revenue outcomes then it's too late, right? So we need to start dialing back and kind of creating a sequence of events almost with activities and saying, well, if, if revenue growth is, is the lagging indicator that we ultimately want to get to, what are the things our teams need to do in order to lift the growth, the growth goals and the growth targets and the growth outcomes? That's what leading indicators are. And, and think of a funnel and, and, and think of all the things we want our teams to do. So leading indicators are things that are early stage front of the funnel that can, that we can, 
view, inspect, and influence and coach around. And lagging indicators is really, you know, you're kind of looking in your rearview mirror and uh, and you're looking back. And you, okay, well, that, that happened. Now what? At least leading indicators, you can still impact the future. So I, I wanted to highlight the difference between those two terms for everyone and really, really get you comfortable to understand it. And, uh, you know, as I, as I go a little deeper and I go, okay, lagging, lagging indicators are too late. They're too late. If, if we're measuring the success of our enablement teams, if we're trying to impact the productivity of our teams, and if we're only ever looking at these lagging indicators, then it's already too late. And you've missed those coaching opportunities. You've missed those opportunities to help reduce the productivity, right? On average, depending on who you talk to, whether it's sales manager association, the training industry, anywhere from 10 to 12 months is how long it takes a new hire to get productive. If you're waiting and that what productive means is different. And if you're waiting for those 10 or 12 months to start measuring success, it's bad. So you got to look for those leading indicators. So here are some examples. While these are all really important to measure and you want to correlate and you want to really get a, the health of your programs, we got to go up, we got to go a step further and we got to start looking at leading indicators. And so I've created a list here for you around some leading indicators that will impact productivity super fast. Now, these are things that we know our sellers are doing. These are things that we know our teams are focused on. And, you know, contacts emailed, right? Super simple. How many emails of my new contacts emailed in their first week or their first two weeks on the job, right? Super interesting. How many sequences have been executed? How many calls have been made, right? There was, you know, some of our customers boast that after seven days, their, their SDRs are able to be hitting, hitting the phones and doing 100 calls a day. Amazing. Now that's a great leading indicator. I love it. Meeting scheduled, right? Quota carrying rep, regardless of the size of quota, regardless of how much tenure, don't we want to know that they're scheduling meetings within the first few weeks of being on the job, right? Versus waiting to that, that, to that lagging indicator. Leads qualified, how effective are they qualifying leads? Now opportunities created is a great one because that's a measure of success. Are they actually creating pipeline? Are they self-sourcing pipeline? And then I, I love looking at follow-up notes. I love looking at the detail of follow-up notes, right? So after someone has their first meeting and they've done their first discovery call and, uh, you know, let's look at the, the actual follow-up email and uh, let's review it. Let's provide coaching around it. Let's measure how many follow-up emails they've had. And then let's look at stage conversion. So this is a great list of not the exhaustive list. There's many more, but leading indicators to quickly impact productivity. And, uh, and, and uh, I really uh, hope that at this point, you're starting to think a little creatively about the data and the metrics that you can measure to quickly move the needle. And so here's a visual. It's a sales funnel, right? And so uh, a buyer's journey, right? Prospecting, diagnosing, prescribing, gaining commitment. That's just, you know, kind of a template. And, uh, and what we want to impress upon you is look for front of the funnel, right? So look at the act leading activities around calls, emails, meetings, start measuring those in the first 30 days. Back to that first story I shared, you know, when I was talking to that enablement professional, you know, once we dove into the virtual bootcamp and we're able to realize that they're training their teams, on sequences, on writing emails, uh, but they're not really measuring the impact, we realized that that would be an amazing way to measure those leading indicators would be great indicators for frontline managers and for the leadership team to get a sense of the health of their new virtual new hire class uh, a lot earlier than the 10 to 12 month traditional time people wait to look to see if they're productive. You know, I love looking at discovery calls. So I wanted to provide those same leading indicators, but give you a visual here across the buyer's journey. So each of you should have your own buyer's journey. You should have a documented sales process. Look for the activities and then start measuring them uh, specifically for onboarding, measure them as leading indicators. And you can also measure them around, you know, anytime you roll out a new product, you can measure these for playbooks. You can measure these for any campaign you have as an enabling professional and uh, order sent. These are the leading indicators that are ahead of the lagging ones, which are specific to uh, revenue growth. And, uh, you know, here's a, a, a slide I wanted to highlight, which now is going a little, a little deeper. Now let's go, okay, we hear you, we understand. Leading indicators, lagging indicators. I've been mostly talking about quota carrying sellers, which is great. They represent, you know, over 15 million sellers in, in, in the U.S. alone. So they're a large group of people that we got to lift the productivity of. But what about other roles? What about sales development? What about customer success? 
How do we measure the health of our and the productivity of our managers in a proactive way with leading indicators? But you got to get the data. And, and, and so, you know, what I'm doing here, what we're doing here is we're saying, listen, we want to measure calls made, emails made and meetings scheduled. We got to know what those numbers are. We got to know what they are. And we got to we got to we got to track them and we got to measure them in the first week, second week, first month, second month. We got to know what they are. And then we got to benchmark our sales development team across those numbers on a regular basis. Now, where are we going to get the data from? Right. And so it's either going to live in sales loft and Salesforce and outreach. You're going to correlate that data with the activity data and all the training and enablement data and sales. And boom, magic's going to happen. You will see that correlation. This is what correlation analysis is. Correlation analysis is the ability to correlate activities with, you know, performance activities with enablement activities. And, and this is so hard, you know, this is hard work for all the reasons I described before. And so what we're doing is we're trying to share with you, here are some examples so you can take it back to your teams. And here are some ways that you are able to elevate your programs, because guess what? If you had access to all this data, if you could correlate the data to your programs, you'll know what's working, what's not working. Look at customer success. I love looking at non-sales roles. I know we're in a sales enablement festival, but hey, aren't we all in sales? And, and the customer success team, you know, I think uh, I, want to, I want to measure time to first outreach. I want to measure, you know, kind of their first QBR. Right? It's not about pitch. It's not about a demo. It's their first QBR that they're hosting with their customers. And like you correlate it with activity data and gain site. Again, examples just to provide you a picture of how to um, how to measure metrics and KPIs that will ultimately move the needle faster. And these are all onboarding examples, which I think are fabulous. And, and so I do have some examples. You know, I love sharing successes of folks in our community. You know, Cali App is an amazing professional. And so I've got three examples that we're gonna share with you. Domo is an amazing partner and a customer of ours. And uh, you know, the problem that they had to solve was, you know, they were rolling out new sales plays, industry plays, persona plays, and they did this post pandemic. They did this uh, uh, last year. And then within the first 30, 60, 90 days, they were generating insane pipeline. So they were correlating the training and the coaching and the pitch practice and all the activities that you do with pipeline creation data. So that way they could understand if the plays that they were rolling out were ultimately driving the outcomes uh, of generating pipeline. And that was a leading indicator to them growing new business. And then, you know, 90 days later, 120 days later, they communicate to the street that their new account growth grew by 26%, right? So this is an example of correlating a sales play with pipeline created. And you can see here the quote, spectacular, the highest new pipeline ever in demo history, which is amazing. Uh, I love it. You know, another great story here, uh, Carol, I mentioned Carol in my talk earlier, and uh, Carol's an amazing practitioner, and she's spectacular. Uh, we love working with her and her team in power school. It's amazing. And so here's what they do. You know, they're sharing content with their with their buyers, right? They're selling K through 12 and, uh, you know, huge demand in the market for the work that they're doing. Uh, everything is virtual. And so they know that when they have a buyer that's interested in the power school SaaS offering for K through 12, they know that if they can get them more files, if they can share with them the presentations, if they can share assets with them and they, 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 they know if they can get that information to them, that they know that will have a, a, a positive effect on, on the deals, on the forecast. And so you can see here, you know, they're, they're measuring and they're correlating presentations shared by sellers and the number of presentations shared. And most importantly, the, the views and the downloads of those presentations by the buyers with the health of the forecast. And they're using it as a predictive leading indicator for deal trends. Spectacular, right? Again, creative, super, super creative, right? It's not just about looking at quota, right? So I can look at a seller's performance and I can say, yeah, you know what? They're going to make their number. They're sending out all these presentations and they're getting great opens and great views and, and the deals that the salesperson is saying you're going to close, they most likely will because the data is saying that there's high interest and high intent. So I love it. And, and, and I love the comment, you know, from Siobhan, enablement done right. Thank you. Great to, great to see you on here, Siobhan. And, uh, and here's someone that you know uh, uh, very, very, very well. Uh, Sarah, Sarah is an amazing practitioner. 
we've been working with Ring Central for years. Uh, Sarah is on Siobhan Thatcher's team. Sarah Frick is spectacular. The, this, this is a program that we did together, you know, a couple of years back that stood out for me when we are talking about correlating activities, right? And so we've talked a lot about salespeople, customer success folks, presentations, content sharing. What about managers? How do we know if our managers are doing the right things? How do we know if our managers are right? And so Sarah, ro Sarah, Sarah rolled out a, an amazing program where they measured the quality and quantity of manager coaching conversations. Guess what? That's just activity data. Right. And so they were able to correlate the number and the quality and quantity of, of those conversations to pipeline and to win rates and both improved. Right. So they knew, hey, if you're a manager and, and, and we want you to be successful, you need to you need to have X number of uh, coaching conversations on a monthly basis, because guess what? If you do that, then your team will generate more pipe. And so three scenarios, three examples that I wanted to share and and. And I always love providing some, some templates and tips. And so uh, what I get asked all the time is, how do I, as an enabling professional, how do I manage up? How do I share the successes that we're working on? How do we share our successes across the organization with our leaders? How do we share successes with our frontline managers? And so I've created, the idea is, you know, as a leader, you're going to send either a weekly or a monthly kind of highlights email and uh, an executive highlights email. And, and, and first off, when you send these emails to your CRO or your GM or your CEO or your frontline leaders or your CMO or any sales leader in your organization, you got to be crisp. You got to make that email super easy to read. I love bolding sections. You got to use bullets. You got to use images. You got to share links so they can access the information. You got to keep it real and no BCC. Be transparent, be open, right? So those are just some email communication tips. But here's an anatomy of a great exec email. Let's pretend that we're celebrating the success of an amazing boot camp onboarding program that we just finished. And, uh, and the headline, the subject line, just like those marketing emails, could be something like, uh, you know, 50 sellers ready to start self-sourcing pipeline. Like, boom, check out that subject line. And then the opening line can be something like, you know, we're really excited that this month we were able to graduate over 50 sellers. We want to give you an overview and some details around uh, kind of how they've gone through it. And then you provide the program summary. Maybe you talk about some of the curriculum they've gone through, some of the outcomes, uh, some of the impacts that, that they've already been able to celebrate, whether it's contacts created or sequences executed or activities done or meetings scheduled, something, right? Share some examples include a couple pictures of some folks as uh, you can, this is our top rookie of the month. Uh, and then, and then, and then talk about your priorities and what's next and what's coming up next. And then close with an ask and say, Hey, listen, it would be great if, you know, you're able to record a welcome video to our upcoming pitch challenge, or it'd be great if you were able to join or whatever that ask is. Right. But this is an email template. You can see how it's structured. You can see that these seven numbers would be bulleted and you could see how appreciative, your leadership team will be if you're sending these on a regular basis, but they've got to be impacts driven and you got to have the metrics and the KPIs to prove value. It's not okay to just say we had hundred percent completion. What was the impact and push yourself to the impact, have a link to examples and have a link to data so you can prove and you can visualize that impact. And so, uh, and look at our customers. Our customers are, are, are realizing amazing impacts. And so, you know, we, we saw the Domo story, we saw the Ring Central story, and, and there's some amazing impacts. And they're correlating, they're measuring, and they're doing great things in the industry. These are all amazing companies and amazing leaders to look out for. And, uh, and why? They're taking a holistic process uh, around uh, sales enablement. It's a process. This is what great sales enablement looks like. Now, what's interesting here is think about everything I've talked about. Metrics and KPIs. We want to get leading early stage activities, right? So when we are publishing our training and when we're publishing plays and we're publishing presentations and we're publishing new product learnings, whatever we're doing, we want to teach people. We want to measure that they're learning. We want them to practice. We want to measure that they're practicing. We want to assess. We want to assess that they're doing. We want to look at feedback from their peers, feedback from their managers. We want to apply. So now we want to see the emails that they're writing or the presentation that they're sharing or the discovery calls that they're hosting uh, or the follow-up meeting notes. See how much data you're collecting here. 
And then you want to see kind of the coaching. And then you want to see how they're actually, you know, what are their conversion rates? What are their win rates? And then you want to see their, their actual closed, closed. And then you want to correlate, right? And so imagine that you had all this data for every one of your sellers across all your activities and all your processes. It seems daunting, but it's possible. You know, our great customers are doing that today. They're capturing and they're rolling out great sales enablement and they're following the process and the process is proven. And uh, and and but you want to measure it and you want to measure it every step of the way. And, you know, we're super excited. You know, I think we've rolled out a correlation engine. This is new. It's on the app exchange. It's in Salesforce. You can use the correlation engine inside Salesforce or you can use the correlation engine inside your BI tool. And here's just a sample chart. Right, This is where you want to get to. I want to see completion or certification or consumption. I want to correlate it to pipeline. These little charts here represent goodness. This here is someone doing great. Down here, someone needs to do a little more work here in order to lift their productivity. And so uh, we're so excited uh, about what we're doing. We're so excited to help you and your teams elevate how you are driving impact and how you're moving the needle. And, uh, you know, if anyone is interested in learning more, we do have a trial and you're able to jump in and use Saleshood or reach out to me. Uh, but this is Saleshood. We're all about learning, coaching, selling and correlating. We're all about correlating, which is so critical. We've spent so much time over the last 24 months investing in our correlation engine. So we can help you prove the impact and help you elevate your programs, and elevate your careers. And here's an offer that we're going to make available to everyone listening in. We have a leadership course, spectacular. We uh, This is open to any enablement practitioner. And you can see here, we've curated the best of the best. There's Siobhan Thatcher, Lori Schrager, Callie Apt, Aaron Farley, Lillian Wynn. You know, I've done a little bit of content in there. And then Werner Schmidt from Sage. They've each recorded their best practices and we've got a self-paced course and we've got a, a, a course that you can run in a facilitated way. It's six classes, 30 minutes each. It's incredible. And so you can go to this URL, you can find it, you can find it on our homepage, saleshood.com. But this is a free offer that we're making available to the entire industry. And, uh, and so with that, I want to say thank you. And I really hope that everybody has been able to walk away with a few tips to measure the metrics and KPIs that will ultimately help you, you know, move that revenue needle faster so you can deliver the revenue outcomes and, and have such an amazing impact to your teams, to your businesses, and, and honestly, to yourself, to your career, because you want to make the impact and you want to prove the impact. And we're here to help. You can reach out to me. There's my Twitter handle. I'll have, the videos will be posted. The, the, the slides will be posted. You can get my book. You can request a trial or sign up for the course. Love to see you. And with that, I want to say thank you very much for having me here uh, at the festival.